Um, the training situation here it involves two of the very best that New York has. Um, my boy to the right, Mr. Rogier over here, it doesn't get better than him in the New York area. And the guy that's on the other side of the dais is the other guy who's at the top of the game in New York, um, Mr. Starks. And, and, and these guys are both familiar with Danny. This is from the uh, press conference um, yesterday for the uh, Danny Jacobs versus Sergey Derevyanchenko IBF title fight that's going to be taking place on uh, HBO October the 22nd in the Hulu Theater in Madison Square Garden. Basically what's called the small room in Madison Square Garden. I'm T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live. It is uh, uh, I was going to say October. It's August the uh, 24th, 2018, 11.41 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Had some uh, legal shit to take care of this week, so, you know, that's the reason why I took the last couple of days off. But nonetheless, we back. Got a lot of videos to pump out, a lot of uh, news to catch up on. And, you know, it's a really weird and awkward situation with this fight because both Danny Jacobs and Sergei Derevyanchenko were primarily trained by Andre uh, Rozier. Andre Rozier considers Danny Jacobs to be his son. They've known each other their whole lives, where meaning um, Rozier has been in Danny Jacobs his whole life. And the trainer you're about to hear from, from the same camp and gym, from my understanding, has known Danny Jacobs since he was a little boy. But yet he's been tasked. Okay, let, let, I, I'll explain. It's complex, but I'm going to explain it. Forever. And frankly, they're both area and the guy that's on the other side of the dais is the other guy who's at the top of the game in New York, um, Mr. Starks. And, and, and these guys are both familiar with Danny forever. And frankly, they're both familiar with Sergey forever. And uh, they know both of these guys like the back of their hand. And it's going to be a really interesting dynamic. But make no mistake about it, um, Gary Starks there with Sergey Dervinchenko to win. Um, he's not Danny's trainer come October 27th. Uh, come October 27th, he's going to be in the corner of Sergey Derevinchenko to see a new champion. Crowd. My bad. That part was important. Uh, Gary, My bad. Gary Stark's there with Sergey Derevinchenko to win. Um, he's not Danny's trainer come October 27th. Uh, come October 27th, he's there singularly. This is um, Danny Jacobs and Sergey Derevchenko sparring. Really, in the corner of Sergey Derevchenko to see a new champion crowned, um, Gary Stark Senior. This is the guy who's training Derevchenko, or is going to be in his corner. Um, I just want to say that um, they're not they're not really going to fight. They're sparring, so you guys. Uh, <laughs> And yeah, I want to say in reality, it's, it's, this is a rough situation for me and Andre because um, we've been with these guys since, uh, I know Danny since a little baby. I worked with him before. And now, you know, we, we, we work with Sergey, and um, we work with each other for different fights. And it's really rough on us, you know. But I guess um, it's, more, it's, more, it's more rougher for the trainers because the, the fighters really, they're not, they're not close and close like that. But... Me and Dre are close to the fighters, so for this fight to go on, it's it's like it's really a difficult for the trainers. But I guess, as you say, it is what it is, you know. And we just have to give the best to each each of our fighters. So, I mean, this is gonna be a it's gonna be a fantastic fight with these two guys because it's two really great talents, you know. So, I mean, you guys are gonna see a really really good Sergey, and you're gonna see a, probably a great. A great, I hope not a great, great Danny Jacobs, you know, but, <laughs> but you know, all in real, I love you, D, you know, um, this is like the Golden Gloves, so thank you. You know, it's got to be an awkward, I mean, it is, it's obviously an awkward situation. Um, in my opinion, Sergey Derev, uh, Derevyanchenko is more of a plotting um, pressure fighter. Yeah, he does have the one punch power, but he doesn't have necessarily, in my opinion, the skills to be a number one guy at 160 pounds. Can he beat a Danny Jacobs? I mean, you know, people are still holding 
um, that Dimitri P. Rock knocked out over Danny Jacobs' head. You know, so obviously, once you've been knocked out, you're always going to be labeled as a fighter with a somewhat questionable chin, especially since he got knocked down by Golovkin, even though he had an excellent performance. And it was a performance where he may have lost the fight, but he won the night in regards of um, his profile being raised among uh, boxing fans in that fight. Because remember, a lot of people thought he was going to get slaughtered. And also, there was the controversy involving whether the fight was going to be made or not on HBO, on HBO pay-per-view. By the way, Danny Jacobs has been on HBO, on HBO since. Because of his affiliation with Al Heyman at the time, likely he's still with Al Heyman, as it's been confirmed by him and Jesse Vargas. And it's been... It's been noticed that Al Heyman will let certain fighters go over, you know, to promoters if the deal is too good. So, for example, for Danny Jacobs, I would have liked, you know, the fact that right now Billy Joe Saunders is fighting. Um, let me spit this gum out. I'm going to bite my tongue. Let me spit this gum out. I'll play the rest of this in the meantime. Because the, the, the selling point and the interesting dynamic in this fight is is the fact that the primary trainer for Andre Rozier had to pick um, um, a side and he had to pick Danny Jacobs, but that severely, in my opinion, handicaps Ser Sergey Derevyanchenko. You see what I'm saying? We'll talk about it. Let's put this going up. You know, like I said earlier, you know, you're a great fighter when you have 400 amateur wins. And, and you know, his amateur career, Sergey's, was every bit as outstanding as. Triple G's amateur career was. Um, he's one of the great technicians in boxing. He knows how to adjust. Um, he could pretty much do everything in a ring. And some people may be sleeping on him because they're not that familiar with him. But anyone who's familiar with him knows that this very well can be um, the most difficult fight of Danny Jacobs' career. I believe it's going to be the most difficult fight of Danny Jacobs' career. Um, Sergey's had to pay a lot of dues to get to this point. Let's go look at that, Lou. Danny Jacobs, 34-2 with 29 KOs. Obviously, his most difficult fight of his career was the Golovkin fight. But uh, Selusky, um, Sergey Derevchenko, will be you know a better fight than Selusky. And remember, Selusky was a 154-pounder. Uh, he was actually supposed to be uh, 154 in a 154 pound eliminator to be the mandatory for Jamel Charlo. He was supposed to fight Venice Martirosian, but chose to fight Danny Jacobs. Got a little bit more money, higher profile. So you know he was he you know Derevianchenko was a better opponent than Soluski, but um, Soluski is a smaller fighter, so that doesn't work to Danny Jacobs' credit. Uh, yes, definitely a better opponent before and after, um, you know, in hindsight, than Luis uh, Arias. Better opponent than Sergio Mora in the rematch. In my Overall, all for amateur skill and what I've seen from him, it's hard to, to see to say he's a better opponent than Peter Quillen. Obviously, better opponent than uh, Sergio Moore, better opponent than after this future 168 pound champion, form, future, former, na future, now former 168 pound champion, Caleb Truax. Jared Fletcher had an excellent amateur background. And then, you know, you got Dimitri Piro. Dimitri Piro has uh, won that fight. It hasn't been seen. You know, boxing again since he had a, a very uh, bad back injury or whatever happened after his back healed up. He was supposed to come back, but never did. So, you know, it's kind of questionable, Lou. I mean, um, Lou, but looking at it, right, the reason why I say uh, the Reverend Chinko is, ha is handicapped is because his primary trainer is over there with the opponent, Danny Jacobs, who is the better overall fighter? So, of course, he knows all the secrets and the tips and tricks, right? He could tell him, hey, listen, you know, he don't like this. And then, of course, they've sparred together. But this fight had to happen because that IBF um, title got freed up because Golovkin didn't fight Sergei Derevyanchenko because it would have been low money and he didn't want to take, you know, it's plain as day that they didn't want to take a tough test like that and risk um, um, the, the Canelo fight that's supposed to happen on September the 15th. They didn't want to risk it. So they fought Venice Martirosian and also, you know, the money issues. 
Nonetheless, he was stripped of his title. I agree with the IBF ruling to strip him of his title. You know why? It's because not that I'm a um, Golovkin hater. And in fact, I, I, I predict or my opinion, I think that Golovkin's going to beat Canelo in a rematch. I just feel that the IBF is very good at sticking to their rules. And if they say they're going to strip you, then they got to strip you. When you're an IBF champion, unless it's some other, you know, type of type of circumstance, and then of course, all sanctioning bodies have their shit with them. None of them's perfect. But in regards to the IBF, I like the fact that they stick to their rules. You 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 have a year. You fight your mandatory. If you don't, we don't care about no rematch clause. As Tyson Fury and Cole Frotch, you know, we don't care. You know about no injuries. None of that. You know, obviously injury. You know, um, it'll be an interim champion, but it's rare. I can go on and on about the um, IBF and how, you know, I support them stripping Golovkin and keeping with their rules and making sure that if you're a mandatory, you will get your shot. No bullshit. But nonetheless, this title's now vacant. So these two, you know, sparring partners, friends, fighters from the same camp, you know, money wise to get into that mix at 160, they had to grab that belt up. Somebody's got to get it. That belt is the key right there to possibly getting Golovkin or Canelo. And also having something to bargain with or even the winner of Billy Joe Saunders and Andre. Now that we know Frank Warren is treating Billy Joe Saunders as somewhat of a free agent and allowing him to fight the fight on the zone and not on BT Sport, a rival pla on, on the zone and Sky Sports, a rival platform. Now we know that if the money's right and if the price is right. Danny Jacobs versus Billy Joe Saunders can happen, especially if that belt is on the line. You know, the same thing with Sergei Derevchenko. You know, so I'm interested in the fight. It's going to be October the 27th. Um, there's going to be another card on that day. We got we got a lot of cards that's going to be stacking up with each other. We got a lot of Saturdays coming up where there's going to be constant, you know, uh, boxing. But let's um go listen to uh, Danny Jacobs. Well, the Revenchinko and then Danny Jacobs, and then see the face off. Fence and not champions, um, but his life is going to change on October 27th at the Hulu Theater at Madison Square Garden, um, Sergei Dervyanchenko. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I'm glad to be here. This is my first big show. You'll be boxing for the first time of the HBO channel. I am. I want to say thank for the HBO channel for for this opportunity. Uh, is my thank bad. You for uh, my advisor Kit Connolly. Thank you, Her Thank you for my promoter Luda Bella. Uh, thank you for Danny. This is uh, this is good fight. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad he's making an attempt. People may think like it's funny, but I'm glad he's making an attempt at the English language. I love when fighters are, um, you know, even if he had to read it, I love when fighters are doing their best to try to capitalize on both markets because if he's smart, you know, obviously he is, you know, he knows that if he wins that belt, you know, then he'll have a bargaining chip as well. Remember, he can beat Danny Jacobs, not saying that he will, but you know, we're still finding out about him. For example, looking at the fight against uh, Deshaun Johnson, very known um, journeyman, you know, a uh, fighter, most notable fight uh, most recently, was against uh, Peter Quillen, and then before that was it Peter Quillen or Jay Leon Love. I know he almost knocked Jesse Hart out and ended his uh, Peter Peter Quillen ended his title run. You know, you could see uh, Toriano Johnson. You know, uh, Sam Solomon. And and remember, he's only had twelve pro fights. We're gonna do our talking in the ring. <laughs> Luckily, Lou, I think you you done your talking for him anyway. If I'd have known you talk more than me, I wouldn't have let you have the mic. Unbelievable. Right. Well done for doing that in English. As well. That was true. Very, very good. Very good. I, I won't speak in, U in Ukrainian today. But um, as all the guys have said, this is a fight that normally wouldn't take place if, <laughs> if the spoils weren't so big. If that golden crown wasn't on the line, I think these guys wouldn't be doing it. And as tough a spot it was for... And I can agree with that. Andre and the trainers and Danny and Sergey, it was also a tough spot. For, for Keith Connolly as well, a guy who has everybody's best interests at heart, obviously extremely close to Danny. 
And um, I'm going to bring in now manager for Danny Jacobs, advisor for Sergei Derevenchenko to introduce on. Same team, that. same team, and everything. And that's how you can tell there is. I mean, that's no bullshit right there. The stakes for this fight is high, is because that you know they're in this. They're on the same team, you know. But um, sorry, Keith, we got to go listen to uh, Andre and uh, and uh, Danny. October 27. On drivers here, everybody. <laughs> well, well, well. Can anybody say awkward? <laughs> right now, this is awkward. Awkward. These two young men, uh, my son to the right of me, my nephew to the left of me, <laughs> they are fantastic athletes. And I will be the first to say that through boxing media, I was trying every angle I could for them to fight other great fighters. I tried to get Danny in with BJ Saunders. I tried to get Sergey in with the next elite in line, even shooting as hard as we could for Triple G when Triple G didn't want to fight a real middleweight and he went after Vanis Martirosian, just so that my guys didn't have to meet in the ring. But they wanted to. They wanted to box against each other. And quite frankly, if all of you weren't here right now, it would feel like we were in to take Danny to camp and prepare him for the hardest fight that he'll probably have. This will be a harder fight than the Triple G fight because I thought we won that one. And uh, that says everything in itself. But um, what I, one thing I can guarantee you is that they are coming to put on a show. There's no animosity here. Then why didn't you wear a Danny Jacobs and Sergey Derevchenko t-shirt? Is, is Derevchenko on the back? This is all about the business of boxing. And they are the consummate professionals, so you will see the best in boxing. And uh, although I'm not looking forward to it, I'm ready for it. Thank you very much, and here we go. Excellent, Andre. Um, nearly all there is to say, apart from to hear. I think I can't I'm sorry. G went. I wanted to see the back of that t shirt. In boxing, been able to do with Danny is to put a schedule together for Danny Jacobs to box three times a year that other fighters just aren't getting at the moment, to allow him to finish a fight go on his holiday, prepare back for camp, know exactly what his life entails. But he's never turned down a fight. He's never been moaning. He's, he's, he knows what it... That's true. That's three, you know, and, 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 and... That's one thing you have to give Eddie Hearn credit for is he keeps his fights, fighters active. Whether you like the competition or not, he goes out there and he keeps fighters active. And fighters love that. Top Rank is doing it right now as well. Um, Louis Aries, um, Salusky, and then in December, I mean, and then, you know, in a 12 month, um, less than a 12 month period, uh, the Revianchenko. We knew what he wanted, a shot at the world title. And I'm so pleased we've been able to deliver it. And I believe on October 27th, he will become world champion at this great arena. And thank you to the MSG guys as well. It's going to be brilliant to be in there on October. That is the former WBA middleweight champion of the world. The challenger for the IBF. There's nothing. I wouldn't allow anything. This is for the love of the sport. This is for the love of boxing. I look forward to October 22nd. I know it's going to be a tough. Uh, I forgot. They were having issues with the stream. Uh, challenge me and the media. Thanks to the IBF and everybody who gave me this opportunity. Uh, I'm on match. Damn, match room. Damn you. Damn you. Oh, excuse me. Damn you, match room. No, 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 it's cool. Let's see if we can hear it in here. The story, you know the story. Yes. I'm very happy with their uh, digital content match rooms. Let's see if we can find. Damn it. Are we going to hear Danny Jacobs talk? There we go. Let's play from here. Let's play from here. Career. And he has one very, very tough fight. This is for the love of the sport. This is for the love of boxing. This is for the fans. This is going to be a war. It's going to be an exciting war. This man comes forward, strong, durable, 
and you guys know what I bring to the table. We've told the story, you know the story. Yes, he came back and beat cancer, but that doesn't matter right now. What matters is he has an opportunity to go down in history as the IBF champion of the world in New York. And whatever, here's what the card looks like. Uh, Danny Jacobs, the Revinchenko, Alberto Machado. Uh, he's the WBA world champion. Remember, he should be fighting Javante Davis, or Javante Davis should be ordered to fight him to unify that belt, but whatever. And uh, the Heather Hardy versus Sh Shelly Vincent, Vincent rematch. I covered the first fight. I'm going to actually do a video on that. And you know what? I might even go to this fight. You know, I have no interest in um, going to fights anymore. But however, we are looking for help in getting people to fights. We were on a roll at the end of uh, last year, and then I got sick. You know, so now that I'm recovered, I'm looking to bring people onto the team now and get to these uh, media events. Obviously, there will be compensation. You know, I'll take care of your, um, your travel and things like that. But if you're interested, you know, contact me in a very professional manner and we can go from there. But in regard to this fight, you know, I will go to a fight like this. You know, um, in fact, I think I have to. I think I have to. We'll see. I'm T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live. Please subscribe.